Welcome to Real Vision Crypto. I'm Ash Bennington. I'm joined today by Stuart Popejoy, founder and CEO of Cadena, to talk about Cadena, smart contracts, and the nature of blockchains themselves. Stuart, welcome to Real Vision Crypto. Thanks so much. It's exciting to be here. So we were geeking out a little bit here off camera uh, before we got started talking about banking, fintech, uh, and other things. Give us a little bit of a sense of your background. Um, so I've been in technology since the 90s. Uh, we were joking about that before. I had, you saw the BBS thing. Um, <laughs> started at Apple in the 90s, but uh, ended up in New York around 2000, uh, 1999, originally for Silicon Alley. You might remember that phrase. That was I, there was a bunch of media. I do. That was part of the you know web boom, uh, but quickly uh, got into exchange and trading software, uh, and eventually uh, ended up at J.P. Morgan, building their equity uh, algo desk, and um, that was so. That was over a period of about uh, fifteen years doing first exchange backbones and then trading in algo software. So, so let's let's tell people who don't have uh, the uh, pleasure, I should say, only half kiddingly, of having worked at a big bank, uh, what that means and why it's significant. Well, it's just that uh, you know it's the whole thing, the digitization of money, right? Um, didn't start with blockchain, um, and uh, and it, and really the two thousand saw this big revolution of uh, really going from the old broker model where you call somebody on the phone to you start submitting orders electronically and they get traded out electronically. And, and that, that was simply because you could get better execution. Um, so that was something that, you know, early on, it was interesting because, you know, you had these tech traders, you know, you have these programmers who became traders, but then like everything else, slowly became commodified, uh, you know, by the time uh, I went to the JP Morgan blockchain group uh, in 2014, you know, it really gotten pretty locked down what was being delivered, but that's crazy because as recently as like five years before that, it was like the whizziest of new tech. And it was, you know, you really got exposed to everything in terms of like everything from like real time systems to, you know, message queues, all this kind of stuff. And of course these systems had to be reliable. They were processing hundreds of millions of orders. Um, so uh, it's, you know, it's, it was a really exciting time. And now I think it's a little more, you know, it's a little more boring now because everybody knows, you know, everybody's offering the same thing now. So when you made this transition uh, to the blockchain group, what were some of the things that you were doing and how was your past experience relevant? I mean, the group was interesting because it was both doing R&D as well as strategic advisory. Um, you know, JP Morgan really wanted to be involved in, uh, not and this wasn't just blockchain. This was in cloud. This was in a bunch of other stuff. But basically, kind of like a group that would put JP at the forefront of you know emerging trends in fintech. In that sense, it was just like kind of one of those be best and the brightest groups in the sense that they were trying to get all the people who could you know uh, kind of think most clearly about this stuff and really understood what the bank was doing and all of its various various uh, activities. One thing that came up quickly while we were there was the need for, uh, you know, the, the, clearly the new thing was smart contracts. And that was the thing that was really going to take the Bitcoin story. And, you know, and this was when Ethereum, this was before Ethereum fully launched. Right. Um, but Ethereum was already, you know, uh, you know, and Ethereum came through, Vitalik came through. I mean, that was the great thing is that because it was JP Morgan, we talked to everybody in the space. And, you know, because we wanted to advise JP on what to do. And then uh, that's also where I, uh, that's where my co-founder joined the team, uh, Will Martino. And so the other thing we did was start working on, uh, technology that could handle the pilot of what would become JPM coin. And, you know, one thing that came up right away was this idea of smart contracts. And it started becoming really clear that there were some things that were going to make them be hard for, uh, industrial, you know, real industrial applications. And one of the things that I had done immediately before at JP Morgan was develop uh, a scripting language that sales traders could use uh, so that if a, a client called like a, you know, a, a buy side client like a Fidelity or BlackRock could call and say, hey, you know, I, I have this idea, I want to trade like this, they could write this little script 
and and roll it out to production in you know in as fast as uh, 24 hours, as opposed to uh, you know writing a custom algo which would take months to get out to production. So one of the things that it that it required is that it required something that like you couldn't have bugs in. Like it's not just like you know, like you can't, it's a sales trader. So you can't expect them to understand anything about software engineering, but they do understand trading. So, you know, so that a lot of what went into Kitana's founding uh, has to do with smart contracts and has to do with this idea that you should be able to offer something that is safe by default, that, you know, that eliminates huge classes of bugs so that, um, so that when you start having a lot of money coursing through these systems, you yeah. know, you don't get, you don't get hurt by things that, you know, that is that can happen when you just let let programmers work with an unconstrained system. You know, meanwhile, at JP Morgan, we rolled out this thing and it ended up being a big hit. You know, it, it was responsible for 20 million year on year revenue. It was, uh, you know, and um, that was really what uh, kind of informed how we approached designing a smart contract language, which is packed the smart contract language on Kadena. Yeah, and to give a little bit of context for uh, why this is so revolutionary, uh, if you've ever worked in a in a bank, you know that there's just an extraordinary level of testing that goes on with every piece of software that gets deployed to production. Uh, the code has to be monitored and locked down and unit tested and tested 16 different ways. Uh, and so the idea here is that the sales traders themselves, uh, who understand the nature of uh, trading, they understand their own uh, algorithms, they understand things like VWAP and some of the the, the conditions that they use uh, to trade, but they don't understand uh, how to produce secure code. So you were trying to essentially build a code base uh, that would allow them to input almost in like a scripting language kind of way uh, that couldn't be broken and that wouldn't cause conditions that would create vulnerabilities in the software. Yeah, which is, you know, and the thing is, I think what people don't understand is that the this is possible. This is something, you know, there are ways that you can make uh, you know, a programming environment safer. I mean, the example we like to give a lot is Excel formulas. You can't crash Excel with an Excel formula. You know, you right. can't, there's huge classes of bugs that just simply won't happen if you're writing formulas in Excel. I mean, forget about opening up the macro editor, but like, but, you know, and that's, that's really what, that, that was one of our guiding lights. Um, and it also informed why we felt that uh, scalability was so important too, because, you know, the, in crypto, people don't seem to get what scalability means. It doesn't mean fast finality. It doesn't mean raw speed. It means that when you hit your limits, you can throw more stuff at it and you can keep going. Explain what that means. Well, you know, think of something like, what, you know, most people, most cloud, you know, products these days, Uber, you name it, um, you know, they start off and then as adoption grows, they, you know, they might have, you know, orders of magnitude, more volume, uh, more traffic. And the idea is that if you started off, you know, rolling out enough uh, hardware to support, you know, millions of users when you're still in like, you know, when you're still in beta, you know, you'd, you'd never launch. Right. Um, and, and, and the important thing is just to realize that like, that's something that this is another example where when you start from the right footing, you know, huge classes of problems go away. So like, you know, just being on cloud, just being able to uh, spin up more servers, these are the kinds of things that people take for granted in the web two world. Right. And this is what we, this is what Kadena brings to the web three world is the idea that like, you can't, you all, Kadena is a scalable system. Kadena does, Kadena, we launched Kadena with 10 parallel blockchains running alongside each other. We scaled that to 20 chains in 2020. It can go to 50, it can go to 100, it can go to 1,000, it can go to 10,000. It, it's, uh, it, it, it's a truly parallel system. Hey, if you like this clip, be sure to check out the full interview and more only on realvision.com forward slash crypto. It's 100% free. Sign up now.